So many thanks, distinguished professor, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear students. Uh, it's my great pleasure again to uh, have an opportunity to uh, d discuss with you and to present the position of Croatia re regarding the current situation worldwide. And uh, basically, I want to start my presentation by, by mentioning few comments and few impressions uh, regarding the forthcoming Munich Security Conference. Uh, namely, the Munich Security Conference uh, will take place on Friday uh, till Sunday. And basically, this is the, the most uh, prominent and distinguished conference worldwide regarding security issues, which are, from my point of view, very much related to democracy and to the current situation worldwide. I will emphasize a uh, few very important statements uh, and few very impo important uh, chapters and topics which will be uh, tackled during the conference. And then I will try to link this with the current situation in Europe and with the current situation in Ukraine and the current situation in my country, uh, Croatia, because Croatia is the country who just recently joined uh, Eurozone, who just recently introduced, uh, joined, joined, uh, joined Schengen and introduced Euro in our system, and it is he's very much focused and anchored in all kind of Western uh, uh, international organizations. Also very much actively participating in trying to find a peaceful solution uh, in Ukraine. Uh, I'll start with my presentation by emphasizing uh, something what is already and always been mentioned in Germany, uh, the situation as a Zeitenwende, the time changings, the changings of time, which is absolutely the, the key uh, word in, in Germany and in Europe uh, those days. We are definitely facing uh, some kind of a very turbulent situation in Europe with an impact to the global peace and uh, security. The, the Munich Security Conference, and I'll be so free uh, today to emphasize and to announce uh, what will be discussed in Munich, because from my point of view, it definitely touch upon everything what is uh, focused to my topic. Uh, the Munich Security Conference uh, issued a report, the Munich Security Report 2023, with a very interesting name, Re Vision. Revision. What does it mean, revision? Uh, and what will be discussed in Munich on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Saturday, Sunday with the participation of basically of all of the countries, plus, for example, China. Uh, the key motto, the key topic of the conference will be uh, a, a kind of a kind of a, uh, a warning of liberal democracy in terms of the current situation versus uh, the, the recent uh, the tendency to have autocracy and the revisions of the autocracies worldwide. Uh, we are all facing uh, a kind of a challenge for our countries to revise global order uh, because the current global order is facing huge difficulties and huge challenges. Croatia, my country, and most of the countries uh, uh, who are making a kind of a very strong alliance toward help to Ukraine uh, uh, is very much uh, from the principal point of view supporting uh, what is from our point of view key international order and key international document and this is the UN Charter's principle, the UN Charter. We think that uh, by the Russia aggression to Ukraine we are facing a huge violation of the key principles of UN Charter. Uh, this is the reason why my country is very much focusing on uh, multilateralism. We are trying uh, to, uh, together with some other partners uh, in Europe and in worldwide, to cooperate uh, based on the international uh, UN Charter, based on uh, key vital principles of multilateralism, because from our point of view, this is the only way uh, how to preserve the international order. At the same time, uh, I think the key motto of the conference will be attention to change the international order in order to be acceptable for all of the countries, again, based on the UN Charter. 
And then we are coming to the point. The point is that the Western democracies, whatever it means, uh, they need to be much more assertive and open for so-called global South. We have to understand the fears. We have to understand the needs uh, from the countries in Asia, in Africa, in South America to communicate with those countries uh, to, to present why is the principal uh, uh, support to Ukraine such an important issue for countries uh, in another part of so-called global south. Uh, we are seeing now that uh, the so-called adaptation of liberal international order based on the rule-based order uh, is very important in order to support and strengthen uh, democratic resilience as a kind of a very important challenge uh, uh, towards the systematic rivals, which we are seeing these days uh, with some countries uh, who are trying to make the revision of the global order based on autocracy. From my point of view, from the point of Croatian partners in the EU and in NATO, we are seeing nowadays a very hard and strong distinction between democracies the liberal democracies and autocracies. Everything is basically based on the least limitation of those two key principles. And this is what we'll discuss on the Munich Security Conference. For example, my prime minister, foreign minister, defense minister, they're all coming to Munich to discuss this issue to see whether we can uh, widen our strategic partnership with the countries in so-called global south. I think it's it's from the vital importance to see whether within the NATO, within the sorry UN framework, we can extend our cooperation in order to persuade our partners in Africa, in South America, in Asia to persuade for the basic principles of the liberal democracy. This is the rule of law. This is the uh, preservation of the of the borders, international borders, and this is the way how. Croatia is approaching approaching the other partners. Maybe our Western partners and uh, and Europe and NATO. Although I can I can tell you that since the beginning of the war, since 24th of February uh, 2002, 2022, we never had such a kind of unity between the partners in European Union uh, and uh, some other partners out of the European Union, transatlantic partners. Uh, as nowadays. So this is kind of an important issue. We got to show unity, uh, which is not easy, because all of the countries who are the members of the EU, all of the countries who are the members of the uh, transatlantic alliance uh, have their own interests and have their own relationship with some other countries. This is a very complicated exercise. For my country, Croatia, it's the, it's the policy based on making a compromise. It is not easy, definitely not easy. Uh, we have to protect uh, our national interests, present this to our domestic uh, population, and, and at the same time make a compromising solution with some other partners. This is 27 countries plus the, plus the other countries who are belonging to G7, because this is not only about Europe and North America, it's about Pacific, it's about Australia, Australia, it's about Japan, it's about South Africa, uh, South, South, South Korea. This is a very important exercise, and I think this that from the, from the current point of view, we are all of the, aware of the fact that we need to have a joint vision, we need to show to some other countries who are running autocracy nowadays uh, that at the very end, uh, uh, the liberal democracy based on international order will uh, prevail. Uh, we are facing today's division, not only from the political point of view, uh, not only from geographical point of view, uh, but also the vision is basically very much and strong uh, in line or tempting the human rights. We have different uh, uh, interpretation of human rights. Uh, we have different interpretation of uh, combination of collective rights and individual rights. Some countries are, especially in uh, who, so countries who are very much based on autocracy, are very much in favor to make preferably uh, uh, 
collective rights or to support collective rights uh, in, uh, uh, in comparison with individual rights. Um, our role, role of the Croatia is to present that individual rights are definitely extremely important. We see the division also on uh, some other uh, uh, very important economical goals. Uh, we see the division regarding democracy versus autocracy when it comes to the climate changing, when it comes to the food production, when it comes to the health, uh, and when it comes to the uh, energy systems. So those are uh, a very huge uh, uh, issues for my country, Croatia, uh, to make, uh, first of all, independency energy, uh, in energy supply, to make a balance in this regard, especially in the Western Balkans and in Central Europe. And, and therefore, Croatia set up, together with our partners, LNG terminal of the, on the island Krk, uh, in order to support diversification of gas supply, energy supply, for the countries in Western Balkans, who are very much exposed, and uh, for the countries in, in Central uh, Europe. Uh, again, uh, we are trying to find the global, to find the European solutions because uh, we, sh we have already shown that once we are together like in the COVID crisis, uh, the European Union found the solution. Just compare the current situation in Europe with some other countries. At the very beginning, China was very much, uh, 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 was very, 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 very much successful. But nowadays they are facing huge difficulties because from our point of view, the constitutional system, the system of rule of law and the liberal democ democracy is always a kind of a compass who will show us the way much better than in the countries who are basically uh, 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 choosing for uh, uh, another option. Another huge challenge nowadays, uh, uh, which is very much in focus of Europe and worldwide is uh, definitely the situation with uh, uh, nuclear capacities and nuclear threat. Um, not only Russia, of course, uh, the, the Russian position and some statements from Russia politicians, they are totally unacceptable and from our point of view, irresponsible. A totally uh, a huge violation of everything we have tried to, since 1945 to make a system which will definitely uh, uh, very much uh, being based on uh, transparency in investing and using nu nuclear capacities. There are some other countries uh, like Iran, like North Korea, who are definitely threatening uh, uh, and making uh, a huge threat for, uh, for, for the, the general global concept of uh, uh, of uh, uh, nuclear order, so I could say nuclear order. Uh, also, the countries in Global South are facing those issues because they are very much depending on with the kind of a nuclear facilities and nuclear technology on those countries who were mentioned by my side. Uh, those, those issues are definitely the big challenge for, uh, for Croatia and for the European countries, but we have to understand that we are now uh, definitely facing a turning point. Either we'll go direction preserving uh, preservation of our basic principles of human rights, rule of law, democracy, uh, or there will be some other solutions which are, from my point of view, totally unacceptable for my country and for the for 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 the vast majority of countries who are sharing our attitudes. But. At the same time, my country and some other countries, they need to make definitely uh, uh, the new approach toward partners in Africa, partners in uh, South America and Asia, reach out uh, those countries who, are, who have huge difficulties and problems in terms of uh, food, in terms of uh, uh, climate change, in terms of uh, uh, the lack of energy, and to be the partners. Therefore, I think that we do not have another option, but definitely insisting on, uh, definitely insisting on uh, uh, democracy and multilateralism. Maybe we have certain positions, different positions regarding the current situation. All of you who are sitting in this room about democracy, human rights, etc. But uh, I think that we do share position 
uh, and opinion that we are standing on the turning point. Now, the, this is the critical decade ahead of us. This is the critical decade in which we will try to make sustainable, successful, uh, uh, successful uh, 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 global order. Uh, the global order need to be uh, approachable by uh, all the countries, and we have to say that war is unacceptable in the 21st uh, 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 century. So the revision is of the liberal order is a challenge for us. It's an option on which we have to work together. And from my point of view, this is the only way how to, how to be resilient in a current situation. This is the reason why Croatia is supporting uh, Ukraine. How do we support Ukraine nowadays, Croatia? Basically, Croatia in the 90s faced a brutal war and we managed to make the peaceful reintegration of Eastern Slavonia based on the UN principles. And this was, from our point of view, the best UN mission ever. We'll try to offer to our friends in Ukraine uh, the same experience, how to reintegrate uh, uh, your country, Donbas and Crimea, through peace, to the peaceful solution without war. We have this kind of experience and we'll offer our Ukrainian friends uh, as well as uh, demining, as well as reconciliation, and as well as rehabilitation uh, of people. In 30 years, it was in 90s, uh, and nowadays Croatia, after 30 years, is in Euro, in Schengen, in Eurozone, also uh, preparing ourselves for OECD membership, and this is a very strong message. By making reform reforms, you can achieve uh, uh, those goals. We can offer and we'll offer this to the Western Balkan countries because Croatia has this uh, uh, expertise and we are very much in favor to see, uh, uh, to see European progress and Europe European perspective for the countries in Western Balkans, but also for the other candidates. Uh, uh, we managed to have this very strong, to reach this very strong, strong decision to offer Ukraine the candidate status to offer this to Moldova and to offer this uh, to Bosnia and Herzegovina. I think it's quite important that in my country, from the principal point of view, we'll do everything to support countries on the way to the European Union, because the European Union, we should not forget it, uh, is uh, the peaceful project. It is the peace project which started after the wars. And you, could you imagine nowadays the relationship between Germany and France? The brutal war. Uh, during the decades is now over. They are communicating and they are having joint uh, governmental sessions and they are two pillars and motors of the European Union. So it is possible. I think it's a very strong message. And this is what we are willing to offer to our neighboring countries and to see also Western Balkans uh, on the same way. Uh, enlargement process is extremely uh, important and uh, we will definitely uh, uh, stick to this goal from the principal uh, point of view. You, I will end my presentation by quoting uh, the legendary uh, British war leader Winston Church Churchill, and I will quote him. No one pretends that democracy is perfect uh, or all wise. Indeed, it has been said that democracy is the worst form of government except for all those other forms that have been tried from time to time. Uh, so I'm now ready to uh, uh, answer your questions, and I hope that some tangible, uh, long-standing solution for the current brutal Russia aggression in Ukraine will be, will be found in the nearby future. Many thanks. I thank uh, the Ambassador of uh, the Republic of Croatia for having presented to us the challenges as they are seen and uh, handled by your country. And uh, it is very important and encouraging for me, as uh, you told us, Mr. Ambassador, that Croatia is offering to Ukraine a way forward in the sense of a peaceful settlement 
of the conflict and of the problems in the eastern regions on the basis of the experience of your own country. Uh, the floor is open for uh, your questions. Please. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I have two questions. Uh, one about Russia. Uh, I'm from Iran, and here and there we uh, hear different voices about why this war started. One of the theories that is uh, actually United States, uh, let's say, uh, started this war against Nord Stream 2 contract because they believed that the European money was going to Russia and this was against the US interests. So some believe that this war is uh, actually to protect US interests, not the global order or the global democratic standards and norms. Uh, this is the first question and uh, I, I want to, mm -hmm. to know your comment about this. And the second one is, I'm not of the uh, same side with the Iranian <laughs> government, so I'm just, I'm just, okay, yeah. I'm just sharing. The, I, I have already escaped them. Okay. Mm. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the second one is uh, about this standard, these global norms that we have that we are fighting for. Uh, this democratic principles, I mean. Uh, Iraqi Kurdistan, as you may know. They held the referendum of independence. Referendum is one of the very symbols of democracy. The Americans and the West overall uh, were kind of against this. They said it's not being held in a proper time. Then the Iraqi Kurdistan president said, OK, give us a time. Let us set a time for it. They did not offer any schedule. So uh, they held the uh, referendum, and the result was that the central government attacked them. And uh, even before, I, I remember an interesting saying, uh, before that uh, referendum, they said, why Catalonia is allowed to hold a referendum to get up the, the paradise of Spain, why we are not allowed to get, uh, hold a referendum to get up the hell of Iraq? <laughs> Okay, so uh, I mean, uh, these things, uh, the main point I want to uh, here actually uh, let's say point out is that I think uh, this global order principles, these democratic principles that we are fighting for are kind of being abused by superpowers and their own interests are always pri priorita prioritized over the real human values that we are fighting for. I would like to hear a comment about this. Let, there are some extremely hard questions from your side. I'll stick with one answer because we can, it, we can debate about this issue, not only you and me and uh, all of them, this whole audience for a week or for a month. My question, my point is, are we sticking with the international principles or uh, UN Charter or not? Are we violating international peace? Are we entering the border of the other countries? Are we uh, incursed uh, our troops into some other territories? Uh, this is this red line. Uh, we can have hundred and hundred referendums. The referendums need to be in line, from my point of view, with domestic uh, rules and regulation, but also with some international arrangements like the Venice Commission from the uh, European Council, etc. But when it comes to Russia, it is a br brutal aggression. So we can, I can not appease such a kind of steps. Uh, to attack some country, to change the border, uh, it is unacceptable. This is this, this, this red line. The international community, uh, the Western side, the, the French side, the German side, during and in, within the Minsk, uh, 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 Norma Normandic format, uh, tried since many years. Angela Merkel was totally engaged in this issue. Some other other countries to make the peaceful solution for Donbas, and we were very patient. Somebody saying too patient. Somebody saying too patient, but. 
the end of the day, remember what was happening in by the end of the year 2021, beginning 2022. There were all of the leaders from Germany, from, from, from my country, Croatia, my foreign minister was in Moscow in January 2022 in order to, uh, to persuade Lavrov uh, to avoid this kind of situation. Uh, I think that the position of Russia is to change the global order and uh, to, to make some new rules from the security point of view, but it will be unacceptable. We will stand behind Ukrainian people because by defending Ukraine, we are defending our way of living. And this is this very important issue. Russia is violating international law and pr key principle of the international law, UN, UN, uh, UN uh, uh, Charter. So this is my answer. And we are not uh, debating from my point of view or calculating in this issue. No, uh, yeah, please. I thank Ambassador Bakota for his presentation and for having addressed that uh, really crucial issue. Unfortunately, there is not more time now to discuss this, but I hope uh, that we have a chance at some later stage to discuss the real problem also of the double standards internationally that are always related to uh, power politics. Uh, thank you. Many thanks. It's my pleasure. Thank you.